You watch a breakfast central here on News Central. Police have arrested 31 criminals, commonly known as junkies, who have been terrorizing members of the public in Lusaka's Matiro Township. The arrest follows an operation conducted by a police after members of the public complained of attacks. Police spokesperson Ray Hamunga said 31 suspected criminals were arrested and are currently detained at Matero Police Station. He said the arrest brings the total number of detained junkies to 65 in Lusaka. Now joining us this morning is Thomas Sapalo, a political activist from Zambia. Good morning, Thomas. Thank you for joining us. All right, Thomas, can you hear us? Well, I'm hoping that your network is indeed stable. Well, Thomas is joining us to uh, um, unlock the conversation on why uh, these junkies in coats, as they are called or referred to, are actually terrorizing the public and community. Uh, what you uh, better uh, see in other parts of Africa, uh, where they call them, some of them are actually regarded to as street urchins, if you yes. put it that way. But in this case, we're also starting to see them uh, terrorize in certain neighborhoods in Zambia. And it has been recalled that there, there was um, a lot of calls coming from uh, members of the public uh, discussing about their safety and the likes. And more importantly, for the fact that uh, uh, this is focusing on the youths. So Thomas is supposed to join us uh, to break uh, into this discussion and let us know uh, what he thinks. But Olive, yes, like they say, if you do not keep the youths busy, you will also get to see them engage in activities uh, that are uh, notwithstanding good enough to help the society grow. Very important um, point you've highlighted there. I'd, I'd always say that one of our greatest trends as a continent is our human capital. If we can't develop our human capital, a lot of these crimes that are being complained about would not be, you know, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be complained about. In countries that have been accused of xenophobia, whilst there is xenophobia on the one hand, some of them, if you check the underlying reason, is a discontent because they don't feel like they're satisfied, they don't feel like they have enough, they're not equipped, they don't have jobs, they're unemployed. And then, like they say, the mm -hmm. proverb, the proverbial, the devil, uh, the mm -hmm. idle mind is mind devil worship, yeah. then kicks in and we start to see these young people engaging in several nefarious activities. So, uh, I mean, it's something that the, the government of Zambia must look into. What are we doing to keep their minds busy? But beyond keeping their minds busy, another angle I'd like us to highlight is the angle of prison reforms. We finally send mm -hmm. these people who have committed crimes to prison but prison ends up hardening them. They come back more hardened. It's like there's no... Our, our, no our, correctional... Yes, it's not really correctional. Even though it's supposed to be a correctional, correctional service, facility, yeah. yes. But it's not really correctional because what they do is they go into prison, they meet with other hardened criminals, form links, and when they go out, some of them even have organized crime still happening whilst they are in detention. So it's how can we actually have a prison reform system that works on the continent? not just throwing them into prison. Because then it's like you're punishing them, but they're just wasting and they're wasting just, out just, the time. Exactly. They're just wasting and keeping uh, themselves ready for the next act as well. But uh, this is a, a common cause that we've seen uh, across Africa as a continent. Uh, not all of Africa, uh, if we mean to say, not all the countries, but of course, uh, we've seen uh, these uh, situations grow from different parts of Africa, and this has continued uh, to uh, raise its ugly head again, this time in Zambia. Hopefully our guests will join us uh, later on in the course of the show to dissect the situation and let us in on what is really causing this. What is the president and the government actually doing? And one of the big things that many people talk about, Olive, is the fact that um, uh, slow responses to calls for uh, a checkmate, especially from the public, when they say, please, this is becoming an eyesore, it's becoming a menace to the society. Can you help us checkmate this? And then you find the security system being so slow, like yes. the turtles, and not attacking the situation. Even the security system too. There's also a dissatisfaction there. <laughs> People do not feel like they're earning enough. I mean, whilst this doesn't excuse anything, yeah. sometimes to be able to solve a problem, you must go to the root cause, not treat the symptoms, but treat what the underlying root cause is. And these are some of the things that are causing it. Um, it seems that we have our guest joining us. Thomas is joining us all the way from Zambia. We are unfortunately having uh, technology challenges, but that's, that's right. of course, uh, one of the things that we have to do with. And he's joining us to talk about the youths who have been detained by the police. Good morning, Thomas. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, good morning. And uh, sorry that we are having some network problems here in uh, this 21st century. 
All right. It's uh, so unfortunate that um, our telecommunication companies and the networks, they don't do their job, mm -hmm. and they're supposed to do it. Uh, however, it's good that I'm back. Hello, can you hear me? Loud yes, we and can. Clear. Yes, we can. Loud and I clear. wish that we had the video on so people could see that you were wearing um, an orange outfit, which looks like in some way some prison outfit, if I'm correct. Uh, is that a prison outfit? Why are you wearing it, if I may ask? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Actually... This symbolizes how we are outside. Because so there's no difference between the guys who are in prison and the guys who are outside. Actually, the people in prison are even far much better because they don't pay bills. They don't pay lentils, free meals and everything. And us outside, I think we are more uh, convicted than those that are in prison. Therefore, I've got these jumpers that we always put on to symbolize economic uh, convicts. We are economic convicts, actually. All right. So let's still talk about the culture this um, junkie, quote-unquote, culture, where is it coming from? Is it something that has always been, that has always existed? Or is it some form of recent development? Would you say that is accelerated recently? Or is something that has always been there? Lead us through this. Uh, you know, the junkies have always been there. The only problem that uh, the government had uh, most of the time just uh, paid a blind eye to the, to the junkies. Uh, to me, junkies are not criminals per se. These are just petty criminals, um, by circumstance. These are young people, most of them who are even educated, some of them come from good families, but they are, are drug addicts, others um, alcoholic addicts. So what they do is, after not getting jobs, they get frustrated and they start drinking. When they start drinking and taking these cheap drugs, they end up, they end up becoming junkies because their bodies need drugs all the time. They become addicts. Uh, at the end of the day, most of them will be kicked out from their families. They go in the street. They walk in the street because they need to maintain taking drugs. What happens is they now become petty criminals who get whatever they put their hands on. Um, therefore, I feel uh, putting them like they are perpetual criminals or career criminals is so wrong for the government. What we need to do is we need to find something that is going to keep these young people busy. Because um, to me, they steal not because they want to steal. It's the situation they are in. No one can choose to be drinking from morning to evening when he's got something to do. Most of the youths in Zambia are so idle at the moment. If you have to look at even the recent recruitment, it's so segregative because uh, 25 years, you can't get a job in the army. It's only strict 18 to 25. So if you're 26 years old, you're a graduate, you can't get a job in the army, and it becomes a problem. What if what you wanted in your life is to be a military personnel, and you're 26? It means you won't do anything. Those who are not strong, they end up going to the streets, they become junk. Um, this is a time bomb, and uh, as a government, I think the government needs to do something. What these guys need is not prison. What these guys need are recreational facilities. But unfortunately, some previous politicians who are in power... They sold all recreation facilities for the youth. They, they turned them into residential uh, uh, places, which is not so good. So right now, when you reach 18, 19 years, you've got no recreation here in Zambia because all the fruits are gone. All the residential areas have taken up where we used to have recreational facilities do, during one party state. Um, otherwise, it's a time bomb. If you are not going to handle the issue of junk scarcity, we end up breeding more dangerous criminals because what they are doing is that they are taking these junk taking them to prison after prison what next because you can't keep them in prison forever so when we take them to prison then what next what's the plan from the government what are we going to do for these junk are we going to are they going to prison to reform but unfortunately our prisons here is not a place where you can go and reform it's only a place where you go to master the art of uh, being a thug and stealing so these junk the ones that we are taking to prison, they, they are likely to come out more dangerous than they were, you know. So as a government, I think we need to come up with plans where we can maybe take them to the Zambia National Service or we take them for counseling. Then those that don't reform, if they commit an offense, that's when they can go to prison. But you can't just uh, take somebody to prison or because they drink or, or because they are junk. Who caused that, uh, the, uh, that junk, junk state? It's the government. Why? Because these youths don't have what to do. They don't have jobs. So they end up drinking every day. So to support their drinking, they end up now committing petty crimes most of the time. 
Well, Thomas, you've spoken you know? so well, especially uh, right before um, your network indeed um, had that disconnection. Myself and Olive, we're looking at these serious issues that you are equally highlighting here as well. But before we ask the next question, we'd like you to please um, kindly get the framing of your camera appropriately because we do know that you are equally putting on an attire uh, that speaks to this topic that we are having as well. So um, uh, please do well to possibly put it on portrait so we can get to see you. But my next question to you simply is, has there been any statement made by the government uh, looking at engaging these youths who seem to have become a menace to the society. That's one. And secondly, um, what are people saying in particular, apart from you being an activist? Uh, I've never heard any statement coming from, from the government, especially a comforting statement. I've never heard any. All the time, all I get is condemning them. Just this, just this, just this. But what we're forgetting is that we are not looking at the root cause. How did they find themselves to be judged? How did they become judged? Those are the things that we need to, to, to consider before condemning them. We are just rushing to, to condemning these people. Because you know what is happening right now in Zambia is that uh, drugs, cheap drugs are everywhere on the streets. We are arresting the users who are the, the young people, of course, who've got nothing to do as, as judges. What about the drug pushers who are bringing in drugs into our society? What are we doing about them? Because I feel those are the people that are supposed to be targeted and not the people that are, are users. Because if these junks stop finding a cheaper source of drugs, I don't think they'll be taking these drugs. But because there's a cheaper source, there's drugs everywhere in the street. It becomes very easy for them to abuse uh, these drugs. Apart from that, everywhere you go, now in Osaka, every corner, they are selling beer. So let's regulate on how alcohol is being sold. Let's also crap down on the drug pusher. Because the moment these tanks stop without drugs, they'll come back to their normal senses. Apart from that, let's try to sit down and try to, to cancel them. Let them go through some form of cancelling. Prison, to me, I don't think it's, um, it's, it's, it's something that I can support. To me, it's like government is just trying to run away from responsibility. These are young people who are graduates. These are young people that come from rich families. These are young people that are exposed, but because they're economically convicted, they've got nothing to do, they've got no money, they've got no hope for tomorrow, they end up doing whatever they are doing. So, mm -hmm. what the government is supposed to do? Hello? Yes, we're yes, here. What with you? What with you? Yeah, so what the government is supposed to do is to find the stakeholders, like the Drug Enforcement Commission, the Ministry of Community Development, to sit down and come up with a solution on how we are going to help these brothers and sisters. Oh. Believe you me, once we sit down, this problem will come to an end. But for as long as they are going to treat them as criminals and not drug addicts, this problem one day will blow against our country. Because just two weeks ago, I had a group of junkies in a place called John Lange right here in Osaka. In a group of should be hundreds of them. They started going door to door, they, they grabbing the merchandise that the women were selling by the roadside and everything. So these are just signs. Now imagine they were just using knives and other sticks, you know. Now imagine if they get hold of guns. This All right. is a time bomb that... Hello? Yes, Thomas Apollo. Unfortunately, uh, in the interest of time, we might have to round up this conversation. But we thank you so much for your time. And we hope that the government is listening. The government in Zambia will do the needful to ensure that these young people are being taken care of before they even get into prison. Thank you for your time this morning. And uh, sorry for the interruption in our uh, communication. Uh, I think our communication companies also need to to, to wise up. They, they need to pull up their stocking. All right. Thank you. Thank All you right. very much. Okay, bye-bye.